Well, now we have analyzed in terms of economic theory the effects of an increase in saving. It is time for us to take the next step. We will turn to page 347 and what is perhaps the most important section in the book, the effects of bank credit expansion unbacked by an increase in saving, the Austrian theory or circulation credit theory of the business cycle. As you recall in chapter 4, we learned that the fractional reserve banking system is able to create money substitutes, part of the money supply, in the form of deposits which are injected into the economic system as loans. Without anyone's having had to save anything first. When the banking system begins a process of credit expansion, and thus injects loans into the economic system, banks also begin a process in which they temporarily lower interest rates, so entrepreneurs will accept the loans. Banks woo entrepreneurs and try to entice them to request loans. We have all witnessed this process in past years. Banks have pursued us to give us loans. This is how money is injected into the economic system. Remember that only around 10% of the money supply is in the form of cash. The other 9 tenths exist merely in the accounting entries which banks make in the loan to deposit process. Well, initially, artificial credit expansion, unbacked by saving, generates a flow of new loans which produces effects very similar to those we have just considered in the case of saving. In other words, with that new capacity to acquire factors of production at lower interest rates and under easier loan conditions, entrepreneurs rush to invest because they believe in the profitability of those lower interest rates of projects they have had in their portfolios and have not yet launched for fear they would be unprofitable. Furthermore, when entrepreneurs are granted a loan, they do not know if it derives from a genuine increase in saving or merely from artificial credit expansion brought about by the banking system. In any case, when the banking system artificially reduces interest rates to convince entrepreneurs to request bank loans in the credit expansion process, the present value of capital goods rises, though temporarily. And entrepreneurs think they should tackle new investment projects as if society's saving had increased, when in fact it has not, because now the process stems from mere credit expansion. When credit expansion takes place, clearly a process of severe entrepreneurial maladjustment or discoordination results. On the one hand, entrepreneurs rush en masse to invest in projects that will mature in a more distant future because they are receiving easy loans at reduced interest rates. But, on the other hand, economic agents, families, households have not decided to save more. They continue to consume at the same rate as before. How can entrepreneurs possibly rush to invest without any increase in saving? In the absence of an increase in saving, how can entrepreneurs possibly step up investment? They can do so because their projects are being temporarily financed by newly created money through a process of credit expansion. And that maladjustment, that widespread discoordination between investors, entrepreneurs and savers who do not wish to save and continue to consume at the same rate as before can last for months and can even stretch on for two, three or four years. Moreover, for a period of time, it seems as if the productive structure could get longer and more capital intensive without any need of saving. Notice that in this chart, consumption is still 100 monetary units. No one has decided to save anything. Nevertheless, some new stages have appeared, the sixth and the seventh. 
What has happened to the interest rate? Look to the right. What is the interest rate? 4.1%. Banks have lowered the interest rate from 11% to 4.1%, precisely so they could grant people the newly created loans. How is it possible for two new stages to appear and for the third, fourth and fifth stages, right up to the stage before consumption, to become wider? Well, all of the money from this entire shaded part corresponds to the new deposits the banking system has created. There has been no saving. Economic agents have not decided to save more. They do not wish to postpone consumption. However, they have embarked on new investment projects and they have widened the most capital-intensive stages, the furthest from consumption, merely with new money that has been created in the form of deposits through a simple accounting entry. Will such a thing be sustainable? Dear students, as intuition will certainly tell you, such a situation is unsustainable. In real terms, we go on consuming, and we do not wish to save. However, with tremendous optimism, entrepreneurs rush to invest because they are receiving easy loans at low interest rates. Money does not grow on trees. Sooner or later, the market, which is highly efficient in dynamic terms, will spontaneously trigger six microeconomic effects that will put an end to the whole process. We will now consider these six effects.